Hello and welcome to the Sub1 YouTube channel. My name is Ray and this is Bot Micro Part 23. Okay, so in the last video, I upgraded the operating system, uh, my robot lab, to version 1.1.1045. And that's been successful. Uh, I was curious as to whether or not my old program was still going to work at all on it. Um, I didn't actually think it would, but it appears to have started up quite happily. Uh, it does, of course, need quite a bit of calibration, but I still need to change it to use the config system anyway. The good news is once I've got all the calibration done, I can go into runtime and I can save the config as spot, which I have done. So I can save config now. So select spot, hit save config, or just hit save config and type in spot and OK. And it will save all the current configuration to the config file. Now, one of the things I'm looking at doing is I do have a lot to learn about the config system. Uh, if I open up VNC so I can get onto spot micro. Okay, so in Spot Micro, if you go into My Robot Lab 1.1.1045, uh, go into the data folder after it's been running, and the config folder, the spot that we just saved, will be in this directory. So we can have a look, and you can actually see we've got. Uh, all these files. Now these YAML files, as they call them, YML files, uh, configure each of the different services. And so we can configure each of the services to suit our own build instead of using uh, Python codes to do it. And this allows us to quickly change the configuration if we need to. Uh, one of the big ones is this one. This is uh, the runtime service. Uh, one of the things I will be changing is the order in which things boot at the moment uh, after intro run Python run and then we started up the Raspberry Pi and so forth. So one of the things I will be changing is moving Python down after clock. And what I also need to do once I've done all of that is back in data, create a folder called spot and in here we will start putting in all of the scripts so this is where the new home for all the spot scripts will be i will most likely create a download package that you can download into this the my robot lab directory called spot and when you run it uh, it will set up all of the required files and then when you start the spot service the idea is it will load all of the configuration services up for us and even start the programs that run in background for us that I've been writing. In the meantime, I did find an issue also with the PCA9685. Now, these devices are really good uh, at driving servos, but the oscillator they use for creating the PWM signal is actually built inside that chip and it's not all that accurate. This can result in the 90 degree position or the center position being sent out to your servos, not actually being the same between different versions of this board. Uh, it will, you can have two of these boards the same and the center for the servos can be slightly offset. Uh, we do have a second one just sitting here. So the center position for your servo between these two boards can be slightly different. Now the solution I found to the one that's in the back here is to slightly adjust the PWM frequency. So the way I did that, and I'll just switch back to my web browser for my robot lab is in Python, 
I entered in the command. I don't know if I can make that bigger. Yes, I can. So I entered in the command set PWM freak 1, 55. Now the default in the program is actually 60. That first one comma does absolutely nothing. Um, so the command for this, that's actually for the Adafruit 16C servo driver service, uh, one I named back. That's the one down here. And what I found, its default is 60 hertz. Uh, this is actually a pin number and it's not used. Um, the code takes it in, but it's not used at all. If you make a change to this, you change it to all, all pins at once. It's a, a per board basis. The default for it is 60. I changed mine to 55 and it actually centered my survey better. So in the case of my right arm, or right wrist, uh, I was having trouble trying to get it to run the full range. And by changing that PWM frequency, I was able to get it to lift it up further. So these are just little things I've been finding along the way. I am going to make more notes on this and put the notes into the GitHub as part of the instructions as I find them all. Uh, during part 21, when I was putting the robot back together, I did note that the bottom of this part, the head, was broken. So I did try printing this out. Um, so this is actually printed in Anycubic's Tough Flexible Resin. And what's really cool about this Tough Flexible Resin is, yeah, it has got a little bit of flex to it. So in the resin basic that I tried previously, I actually found it was very brittle. Uh, it would have been no good at all for a robot dog. In fact, uh, when I was trying to use it for an iMac or the InMove series robots, I found it was also far too brittle and would break very easily. But this uh, tough, flexible resin appears to be a lot stronger. I did print out a 6mm thick 37mm diameter disc as a trial just to see how it would go. Uh, it, at that thickness, it was fairly firm. Uh, it took a lot of force to bend it. It returned from a 45 degree bend quite happily. But when you look at these, you can see they flex all right without actually breaking. I've had this done up in this, uh, which I also printed out in the same material, so it's a little bit flexible. I don't know if it's ideal for that part of the robot, but this will be good for the head, and I can paint this to suit whatever colour I need. So at some stage, if you see the head go green, it's because I've installed that as a replacement for the one that's cracked at the bottom. So I am looking at different areas of the robot all at the same time, uh, being a little bit scattered with it. But as I get through it all, I'll uh, update the program. I've already made some updates to correct a few, uh, I suppose you would call them formatting errors more than anything else, uh, would cause issues with newer versions of Python. The version of Python that runs in my robot lab is 2.7 or thereabouts. But the code I was writing was not really compliant with Python 3, so it's now updated to be compliant with that. And I'm working through writing the code to support installation and the use of the configs. So I'll try and get back onto that and uh, update you with some more code updates. And hopefully we'll be able to start testing walking in the not too distant future. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to help the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and you can join my long-term patrons, uh, VIP Go Lucky and Lorenz Berger. Uh, 
who have been supporters for 18 months now they get these videos at least a week before youtube does sometimes faster i also have a discord channel if you've got any questions feel free to drop into the discord and ask questions uh, if i can't help you someone else in the community might be able to and we'll see you in the next video